Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Madden and I'm a traditional artist. This painting started as all my paintings do with a sketch and a transfer. This is kind of the first attempt, or my first serious attempt, at trying to really get the most mileage out of my ideas. In the past I would have an idea for a feeling, or a motif, or a color combination that I really wanted to paint, and I would make one painting and that would be it. But I've realized that this isn't really what's best for my creative growth, and it isn't the most economical way to use my imagination. I have wanted to start exploring my ideas in more depth and for longer, and to really push myself to mine them until I really figure out how deep they go. A while ago I did my green swan painting which I decided to name Budding Romance because it was inspired by flower buds and I think it's a very romantic pose. At the time of sketching the first thumbnails for that painting, I had a lot of ideas all to do with swans, and I liked all of them, but as soon as I finished Budding Romance, I could feel myself wanting to move on to find the next shiny new idea, and abandon the old ones even though I hadn't actually used them and I really liked them. But I finally did get back to one of them, and I pushed through it, and I'm really happy I did, because I know this idea alone would have haunted me for forever if I hadn't painted it. I just love the idea too much. The perfect S of the swan's neck as it embraces him, and the intense colors contrasting with the very serene, still mood of the painting is just too much for me to ignore. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to paint the swan red, and the background light blue, as it's one of my absolute favorite color combinations. Color, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to stop a simple composition from being boring, and this is definitely a very simple composition. Another reason I wanted to dig into my ideas a little deeper is because, like I mentioned, I'm going to be having my first gallery show next year, and I want it to feel cohesive. I want it to flow together, and digging into themes and ideas is the best way to do that. I really sat down and thought about what I wanted the themes to be, the colors, the mood, and I'm really feeling like bold but rich color combinations. Red is a big one for me right now. Um, a very very bold red, dark green, dark blue, grayish powder blue, and I'm also feeling like a very still mood. A lot of people are trying to avoid stillness in their paintings and while I don't want anything to look stiff, um, I, I'm really enjoying very, very still compositions right now. I want it to kind of feel like you've just paused to look at something that you only just noticed, to feel like time is a little bit stretched and a little bit still while you're staring at the paintings. So. That's part of why I'm really, really wanting to actually go for much more still compositions that look like nothing's actually moving in them. I think that the world moves really, really fast these days, and so having moments of stillness is actually very rare. So I think it's um, actually something that we might actually see more artists uh, embracing in their art, just as it becomes less and less common. Um, I'm also really focusing on nature right now, and the fact that humans are part of nature, like, we're animals. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of themes of that in my uh, upcoming work, and just kind of playing with the fact that human nature is, you know, an animal nature. Yeah, just like, got a little philosophical, but I think that's good. I think it's giving me a more core feeling to go for in my upcoming paintings. The shadows were done in a pretty interesting way that I never tried before, 
it was an experiment, but it's one that uh, I think paid off really well. Originally, I was going to mix violet and green to make a gray-blue that would be very appropriate for shadows, but I decided to layer them in very thin, light layers instead, and I think it turned out really gorgeous the way just some violet or just some green will peek out here and there. Um, I think it's, it's a very dynamic way to do shadows, and I really like it. I'm definitely going to be trying it again. In fact, I want to make a painting using almost just the violet and the um, green in a painting. I think that would be a really cool color combination for a very limited palette. This painting took me quite a while because I kept having to stop and um, work on other YouTube videos that I was trying to get done so that I would have a YouTube video every single week. And so it dragged out a very long time. And normally when a painting drags out a very, very long time, I tend to lose the thread of what I'm trying to accomplish. I tend to start forgetting and my notes, which are normally more than enough, just stop giving me the information I need. But thankfully that didn't happen this time. I think that was helped by the fact that I was still working on it throughout the whole time. It wasn't like I got it halfway done and then I put it down for weeks and then I picked it up and finished it in one go. It was like a little bit at a time sprinkled out. So um, I think that helped, but I really, really hate having paintings take a really long time because that's still always a risk that I'll forget what I'm doing and then I'll end up with like a really shitty painting. But yeah, thankfully that didn't happen this time and I'm actually quite pleased with this painting. I, I really, really like it. I've decided to call this painting Embrace. I think it kind of harkens back to the other swan painting uh, quite nicely. I don't know what my next swan painting will be, but I am definitely looking forward to it. Before I started, I thought I would just paint this one red, but then I realized that it would be much more interesting to give most of the painting a red underpainting, leaving just the face unpainted so that it kind of glows, and then doing the background over the red underpainting in gouache, leaving it sort of streaky and patchy so that it's not completely flat and boring. I had to put off the background color for a really long time to ensure that it wouldn't bleed into anything else, um, as I put down fairly heavy layers of watercolor. But I was itching to do it the entire time because I just knew it would look so good. The moment I finally got to put it down was absolutely amazing. It just throws the red into such bold contrast. The colored pencil was actually quite interesting because I used a lot less of it than I initially thought I would. I've been um, using more and more colored pencil in my work as time goes on, but uh, with this one I really stepped back and used a very light hand with it, um, which was good. <laughs> it was good to have a break. But the one bit of colored pencil that I added that I think really did something, um, like really really special, was a tiny bit of like a bright tealy green that I added here and there um, on the skin and a little bit on the red of the swan and I really think that, that looked really really gorgeous. Um, it looks like reflected bouncing light almost and I think it also helps to make the red pop even more. I think it looks really really pretty. It's almost like a, a shimmering effect. So that was another experiment in this painting that I think really, really paid off. There's a deer looking at me through the window. Okay. <laughs> I finished it all off with a workable fixative, mostly just to mattify the colored pencil. I find that when you add colored pencil on top of watercolor, it can be distractingly shiny because of the waxy base. And it's really, like I said, it's very distracting. So spraying on the workable fixative helps to mattify it helps to blend it in with the textures of the rest of the painting and make things feel a lot more cohesive. I hope you enjoyed watching me create Embrace. Um, hopefully some of you will be able to see it in my Max Grover gallery show next spring, <laughs> late spring, early summer. 
as of recording this section of the video, I have moved into my new studio, and I might do a studio tour of that relatively soon, but I can already tell that this is going to make it much easier to concentrate on making art, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and I apologize for the awkward lighting in any of the face talking segments because I have not figured out how to light this studio just yet and it's very very dark. The only like built-in lights for this room are behind me on the wall, like sconces, and they're really bad. They strobe on camera so badly because they're not light bulbs. They're just chips in the sconces, so I need to completely replace the light fixture in order to change those. But yeah, with all that said, if you liked the video, like it. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos, and leave a saucy little comment below. I love to read your comments, and I respond to as many as I can. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye! Oh my god, that deer.